Previously on 30 in 30. I made my way to New England, was welcomed by the Patriots, and even got to wear some Super Bowl rings. Sorry, Falcons. Well, it's day... Giants, what, day eight? Day eight. And we actually got about six to seven hours of sleep, which was really, really nice. And today's very special because I get to go home. Johnny and I were on our way home when we saw the article. An article that could spell disaster for the entire trip. You see, the Swifties, they believe in swift justice. Any miscalculation could spell certain doom. Or it was just a clickbait article. To the Swifties. I now realize how damaging my words were, and I am so incredibly sorry. I will be taking the time of Don't Blame Me to reconsider my actions and improve for the future. I'm truly sorry. Don't blame me. Your love make me crazy. Back in New York, even though we were technically in New York the other day, because Buffalo's in New York. But New York's really big. Wait, I know Ball to you. I found her Uber drive. You'll call for Uber. When we finally pulled in, I saw the house that I recognized immediately. Though, there was some nice new mall show. Shout out Papa Grassi. And it was immediately when I walked through the door, I knew I was home. Oh, it's so good to be home. Oh, just about everything where I left it. Everything nice and tidy. Oh, we can see what the, what the... Hey, Tom. What's up? What are you, what are you doing? Nothing. Me? <laughs> Just hanging around. Johnny getting to see the PatCast studio and maybe getting a little too comfortable. I think it says right there, it says PatCast. It says BarkCast. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it say, let's go barkcast. And soon, Mama Grassi brought over the puppers. Having not seen them in a week, it was a bit of an emotional moment. <laughs> and then they ran over to Johnny first. <laughs> After the puppers enthusiastically greeted Johnny, they eventually found their way to me. And then I had to find the gatos. Nova eventually warmed up, but Nebula, it took a little while to find her. And so even though I was frantically working, trying to plan the New York City meetup, heading to New Jersey, that sense of familiarity provided some calm in what had been a hectic eight days. And then I was off to New Jersey, because this is 30 NFL stadiums in 30 days after all, and I needed to go to MetLife. MetLife Stadium, one of the largest stadiums in the NFL with a capacity of 82,500. Not only have they hosted a Super Bowl, but also will host a World Cup game in 2026. As we headed to Jersey, I was flooded with memories of going to Old Meadowlands Stadium and the history that was there, the connection with that place, even with Vince Lombardi. And I knew that I had to make this stadium look as epic as it was in real life. Anticipation began to grow. Butterflies swirling around in my stomach. I had to get the perfect shot, comb over every single inch of the beautiful architecture that is MetLife Stadium. It wasn't just the pressure of one fan base to deliver, but two, the home of the Giants and the Jets. And hell, Aaron Rodgers my long lost love was now in East Rutherford. As we drew near, my excitement grew and anticipation began to grow. We're gonna go home now. Yeah, so Ed Sheeran was setting up, so anticipate an article about beef with him in a few days. It was then time to head to the Big Apple. And no, that wasn't a large supermarket, but New York City the city that never sleeps, 
constantly moving at lightning speed. Except when you're sitting in traffic for the Lincoln Tunnel. Welcome to New York. Oh, and even Tom Brady followed us there from New England. Now, I didn't know what to expect. Growing up around Giants and Jets fans, this was a bit of a homecoming for me, but I have had my issues with the Giants in the past. Namely, the playoffs that they knocked us out of a few times. And it was when I arrived in Bryant Park that I saw a sea of NFL fans. Something was a bit different. Yeah, there were Giants and Jets fans, but it seemed that almost all 32 NFL teams were represented here. Because of course, this is New York City, where all walks of life come together and try to coexist. I spoke with Jets fans who had a new sense of confidence that had been lacking in previous years. And of course, I knew why that confidence was there now. Oh God. Oh, it feels so wrong. I even spoke with Giants fans who had higher expectations this season after a surprise playoff berth last year. And I spent the next few hours in Bryant Park meeting the fans and I'd be lying if I wasn't filled with a sense of pride. This was a city I had been in a million times, a park that I had spent days in. And now there were groups of people that were here for me. It was an incredibly humbling experience and getting back on the Metro North to head back home, it allowed me to just reflect on once again how crazy this entire journey has been. And after getting home around 12.30 at night with a long day ahead tomorrow heading to Philadelphia, it was there that for the first time in eight days, I took a break. Which is ironic because in the shadow of New York City, the city that never sleeps, the city that never stops, for two hours, I was able to slow down and realize the magnitude of what we were doing. Whether it was meeting fans, helping people, and of course, raising an insane amount of money for St. Jude. It allowed me to really take stock of what this journey was and what was to come. Sure, I only got three hours of sleep that night, but surrounded by puppies and kitties, it was the best sleep I had all trip because I was home. It's New York, baby! <laughs> A reminder that you can donate via YouTube directly, or you can click the link down in the description. Both methods get added together and sent directly to St. Jude. However you wish to support, it is much appreciated.